Welcome to Let's Talk Solar. Um, it's an event hosted by Mary Beck Libraries uh, and presented by Solar Savers and Eco Energy. Um, I'm Catherine, I'm Mary Beck's Energy Officer. Um, I'd like to start the night with an acknowledgement of country. Um, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waterways on which we're gathered today, the Wurundjeri and Woiwurrung people. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, as well as to all First Peoples communities who significantly contribute to the life of the area that is Mary Beck. Uh, so, yeah, welcome everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. Um, just to let you know where all the important things are there's toilets out in the foyer as you came in, um, there's an emergency exit and a fire extinguisher over here. Um, just to let you know that we do have two, I think three, air, air purifiers, and they're all on in the room tonight. Um, I think that's all on my list. Uh, oh, if you can turn off your mobile phone, please, that would be super useful. Um, and we do aim to make these presentations accessible to everyone, and uh, for that reason we are recording the presentation tonight. Um, it will be streamed on Facebook and uh, also made available after the presentation. So if you do need to leave early or you want to refer back to it, you're welcome to do that through the, uh, the library's website. Uh, just gives you a bit of an overview of what the, um, the presentation will look like tonight. So we'll start with Kate from Solar Savers. Hi everyone. Thank you, Catherine. And, um, it's lovely to see so many faces here to talk about solar tonight. As Catherine said, I'm Kate, and Anna and I work together on the Solar Savers team. We're a not-for-profit local government initiative, um, and we work across 12 or soon to be 13 local councils, assisting businesses and residents install solar on their properties. And we assist residents by, next slide, by being a council-backed program. So because council supports it, there's a bit of safety and longevity in not just the program, but also the system that is installed via the program. We also went out through public tender a few years ago to kind of rigorously assess different solar installers. And we picked Eco Energy, who are our partner in the program, because of their quality products, their fair pricing, their customer service, their own longevity, so you can ensure your warranties are kind of valid for the whole life of the system, um, as well as for their safe installations. Um, another reason why it's kind of beneficial to install the solar is because we complete a lot of compliance audits and OHS audits in addition to what is industry standard, so 5% in addition to industry standard. And finally, if you go, if you install solar throughout the program, you'll be speaking to me if you have any questions or any problems, or if it needs to be escalated, you'll chat to Anna. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're kind of like a communication and administration overlay to ease a bit of the stress and boredom of installing solar, okay? <laughs> um, and now I'll pass over to Anthony from Eco Energy to chat about the, the ins and outs of solar. Um, so hello everyone, I'm Anthony from Eco Energy. Um, we're a residential solar and battery installation company. The company's now at, trading as the Echo Group, it's been around, I think it's nearly 11 or 12 years now. In the last couple of years we've entered into a partnership with Energy Australia and, and they currently own the group, but we're still an independent residential and commercial solar and battery installation company. Um, the, with our partnership with Solar Savers, one of the things that we can offer is uh, a bulk buy price in the solar quotes or the battery quotes that we do. We, we sort of sit in this top five group of large sort of premium solar companies that's out in the market at the moment. So, next slide, please. so in partnership with uh, Solar Savers, the idea is to be able to to give you confidence that we're a, a, a trusted or a, a, a good solar company. Solar has a, has a funny name and lots of strange things happen, um, but we like to think that we offer good installation, good products, uh, good service, good pricing, 
We're a clean energy approved, uh, CFC approved retailer. We use our own in-house accredited installers. Um, we've done over 500 bulk buy installations uh, through the solar savings program. Um, and we, we offer a full five year, uh, 10 year installation warranty through the solar savings program. Uh, so on this slide, we just give you an overview about uh, how solar works. Uh, in that, with the solar panels up on the roof there, uh, the, the sun, when it activates the cells in the panel, turns that into a DC current. It comes off the roof to a, uh, a solar inverter, and this is then uh, converted to AC current for the house. So in what we call net metering these days, net metering means all solar generation off the roof is for the house first. Uh, any excess energy that's uh, not consumed by the household is then exported back to the grid and you get paid for that. And on your bill that shows us an additional billing line called a feed-in tariff credit. Um, it, uh, it's the same thing, isn't it? I had it. Righto. So that's that one. So adding battery storage uh, into the equation is along the same lines in that you've got generation of the roof will be for the household first. Uh, any excess energy you don't use will then get stored in the battery. Uh, when, with the idea being that when the sun goes down, it will load shed that energy back to the house to release you further from the grid at night. Um, and in some cases, you can then go from generation of the roof of the house first, uh, excess into the battery, and then in some cases, like in the summertime, you'll find you'll even have more energy left over that will also get exported back to the grid. And again, you'll get paid a feed-in tariff credit for that one. So there's a number of things we've got to take into consideration when we're evaluating uh, a home for solar. And a lot of them are really critically important. Um, roof space and shading is a very, is a very serious consideration. A, a lot of people might do a bit of research on solar and want to get as much solar as they can, or they've read an article that said, we've got to have this much. If the roof can't take it, well, that's, it's, it's a hard one, it really is. It's, we've got to work with um, the capacity of the roof or the orientations that are available on the roof. Shading is a real serious, uh, it's a real serious part of the solar, the solar system in that solar panels, most of the solar systems you see when you're driving around are just called a string system. It means all the solar panels are wide and series. If any of those panels are compromised by a shading profile, it could be a tree, it could be your neighbours it will reduce the efficiency of those panels. So when we're assessing a home, we've got to look into that and see what, from what we can see above. We use a program called NearMap that allows us to go back through time and look at different times of the year and different times of the day. So all of that's taken into consideration. Roof, roof strength and pitch is really important. Uh, at our company, we can install over 30 degrees, but it includes a steep roof charge. There's additional, um, there's additional sort of scaffolding uh, required around the roof when you're doing the installation. Over 35 degrees, we can't do it. It becomes unsafe. That, that's a real serious consideration. Every, everything else that comes into it, in, in Victoria, we're very lucky in that we had a, we had a rollout of smart meters, bi-directional smart meters about 12, 15 years ago. Most of our homes are solar ready from a metering point of view. You'll always get one of us asking you for a photo of the switchboards. The switchboards are a real, um, a real important part of the solar journey. In if the if the switchboard's not compliant or it's full, we've got to notify you of that, and it will incur additional costs. Not many of us, not many of us have ceramic fuses left in our switchboards, but we do meet people who do. They're not solar ready, right? So if you send me a photo and you've got ceramic fuses, I'll immediately notify you that you've got to get that switchboard upgraded. Warranties are all, uh, for homeowners, warranties are really important. You know, the three key warranty points that you'll get in a solar quote is the panel warranty, uh, the inverter warranty, and then the workmanship warranty. And all of those are really important and, and very relevant. Warranties have come a long way. At the moment, we've got panel warranties between 25 and 40 years. Inverters are 10 to 12 years now, and workmanship warranties are between five and 10 years. So it's, it's come a long way. Um, when we talk about upgrading, we, we meet a lot of homeowners in Victoria that were part of a government scheme 11, 12, 13 years ago with very small systems, that a lot of those systems are now not working like they were, or they're broken, or, so we're, quite often we're quoting for the replacement or the upgrade of those systems. 
Okay. Just on that, and yeah, I think I'll ask a question. Um, so, if you've got a system that's got panels that are still working, and yeah. you're okay, can you upgrade um, part of the system so it's the inverter? For yeah. Example? So no, no. So you can't add to those systems. The, um, the the existing system and the existing inverter won't be electrical compliant today. So what we are doing is we're either replacing the whole system or we're adding a second independent system. Okay. So. We, there's a lot of those small systems that are still out there and still working fine, mm. which is quite strange. So the earliest one I've seen is 2008 and it's still working, giving them a great result. So it's, it's, but it is a, a landscape. I think people are thinking more about thinking about the financial or the return on investment or how it can reduce their billing. So they're looking to either increase capacity, they're looking at batteries, they're looking at electric vehicles. It's been a very interesting year this year about people wanting to expand mm. beyond what they were originally thinking. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so in a solar quote for uh, Victorian homeowners, there is, uh, there is a couple of rebates available. We've got the state government scheme, which is called Solar Victoria. It's a, currently it's a rebate capped at $1,400 for solar only. Uh, the state government also makes uh, a four-year interest-free loan to the value of that rebate. So if you were to take up, uh, if you were eligible for this rebate, it means that you'll ultimately have an out-of-pocket expense to me and an out-of-pocket expense to the state government for fourteen hundred dollars over four years. They, they've also got a battery rebate. A battery rebates capped at twenty nine fifty, which is a which is you know quite a considerable off the price of a, a battery only quote. You can't do both together, so <laughs> you can have if you're doing a quote that's uh, solar and a battery. We encourage most people to take the battery rebate, and that's. That's the state government program. Um, it's pretty straightforward. The eligibility is property value less than $3 million and income less than $180,000. Are there any council programs that you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there is. In Victoria, we're very lucky in that we've got council support, state government support, and federal support. We work in New South Wales and Queensland, they've only got federal. They get no support at all uh, locally. So it's quite strange. There's a battery program in New South Wales at the moment, but it's being tested in the Hunter Valley, which is no good for Metro Sydney. So it's kind of weird. So yeah, Mary Beck City Council does have a subsidy available for low income homeowners at the moment. So if you're a Mary Beck resident and you're on a low income and you own your home, then uh, and you're eligible for the Solar Victoria rebate, you can actually get support from all levels of government to all use solar at the yeah. moment. And it's good. And the Mary Beck subsidy is itself three thousand. Yeah, the Meribet subsidy is $3,000. Um, so so that's $3,000 that we're really comes We're really lucky here. We, we just get one all the way through. Is it? Pardon me? Is it for anybody? It's, it's for, for Meribet residents yeah. who are on low incomes. If I'm not on a low income. So if you're not on a low income, then you wouldn't be eligible for the Meribet subsidy. Uh, but if you're, no, but you're, still you're eligible for the solar, you could yeah, be so eligible for the you still get state government and federal government support. Right? And, and you would be part of the bulk buy scheme through Mary Beck as well. So you are getting it, it's just they have different programs for different homeowners, that's all. Um, the second one we've got is the... Sorry? Oh, sure. This will also be going up online, so... Also, you're also eligible uh, in a solar, solar only quote for federal government assistance, they're called STCs. The value of the STCs is determined by the size of the system. So currently, in Melbourne, a 6.6 .6 kilowatt system, the STCs is worth about $2,200, approximately around that price. And you don't have to apply for that, that's an automatic... You, you automatically system. qualify for that one, right? So it's just that the value difference in the different size of the system, that's all. It's probably also worth mentioning about the Solar Victoria rebate, that that may change come July 2023. We yeah. don't know. Yeah. Well, it used to reduce twice a year, but COVID kind of stopped it. And then there was an election this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been at this amount um, the whole time it's existed. So it, it can, it may go down in future. So at the moment, if you uh, are in Maryback and you're a low income homeowner, it's a really good time to yeah. get solar because you've got um, access to, um, to a lot of incentives to reduce the cost. So federal government STCs will be phased out in 2030. They kind of reduce by about 6% every year. It's just a slow reduction. But it, again, it, it can it makes a they're expressed as discounts on your quote, but it's a, it helps reduce the cost of solar quite considerably. Right. So 
Again, these are the sort of things that we talk about with homeowners every day, the benefits of solar panels and, and batteries. And we walk through these ideas all the time, talking about clean energy from the sun, um, and all day, every day, in the sunlight hours, that's gonna produce free energy for your home, clean, free energy. Um, solar is uh, cheaper than grid energy. This year hasn't been a great year for energy billing. The energy rates have kind of gone all over the place. And it's the first year that we've been dramatically <laughs> requesting quotes for solar because energy billing just went through the roof. Um, it, it's a way of keeping your billing trajectory going down. If you're, if you're a solar home and you're utilising that free energy off the roof every day, you'll, you'll see this continual pattern of your billing going down. Like it says here, you're saving approximately 1.3 kilograms um, of carbon every kilowatt of electricity that you that, that is saved. Federal and state government solar rebates, they can contribute up to around 50% of the cost of your solar system. And in, in some cases, it, it really does make a really great reduction for anyone who's coming into renewables. Battery pack-up power has been a huge conversation this year because of the increase in, the increase in energy rates on your billing uh, and also a reduction in feed-in tariff credit that they're giving you for export energy people are sort of looking into ways about how they can utilise this energy more than giving it back to the grid. So that's battery backup up power is one of those ways. Righto, so at work, the panels that we use uh, for residential installations, we've got three brands that we use. We use a Ryzen 440 watt panel. Uh, it's, a, it's a 25 year warranty. It's a very high efficiency. It, just under 21% um, and 25 year performance and product warranty uh, as well. The next one we have is a Q-Cells, it's, it's called a G10 series, it's a 405 watt panel, it's 25 years as well and again very high efficiency, just over 21%. Uh, then we have the number one panel in the world, it's called SunPower Maxions. They've got a 40 year warranty. They've got the highest efficiency in a panel of nearly, or just over 23%. They're, used, they're cell structures used by NASA and they use them in solar car trials. They've got a very unusual cell structure if you feel it compared to other solar panels. It works unusually well in, for example, like here, you might see that there's kind of like a shadow profile being caused by this tree. Some power panels work unusually well in compromised light. All three of those panels are considered what we call tier one. They're all CVC approved. They're all approved by Solar Victoria as well. Um, and, and like it says, the performance and the product warranty is between 25 and 40 years. When I started in solar, most, most warranties were around 12, 15 years. So that's the, the confidence that they're getting in their products now is we're still starting to pull it through. Um, can you yep. um, just explain a little bit about the importance of the panel being Clean Energy Council approved and being a tier one Oh, and and also about what that, why that's important. I think the tier one thing is sometimes get overused, okay. right? Mm -hmm. All all CEC approved in, uh, solar installers, if they're going to claim rebates back from the federal government or from the state government, the panels have to be in that product group that you can claim back on. So if somebody comes to you and says, well, we've got this really cheap deal, you're also eligible for the rebates. They might not be able to claim them because they're not CEC approved panels or solar Vic won't have them in their product group. So. I don't see this anymore, right? It's like all, all my competitors, us, we all use products for that reason. Nobody wants to get sort of tipped out. Um, so we sort of see most of the companies are all using, they all use this word tier one, but everyone's using a CEC approved panel these days. That's what I'm seeing. We do have the next question. Yep. Uh, Ryzen or 441? Yep. Did you use those for 405? 405. 400, sorry. 400. Yeah. Now they've got, a, they've got a range of series that go through. They've also got a what they call a performer series. Carries not the same warranty, similar efficiency, but it's a lower cost. The Maxions are made in Mexico. It's a US company that's made in Mexico, but it's, it, this 40 year warranty, it's insane. But their, their performance, there's a couple of trials that used to be available on YouTube where they would have a sun power panel and an opposition panel on a forklift out in the sun. And they'll just, measuring their efficiency and their output, and then they pull the forklift under the eaves of the warehouse. You see the opposition panel just go through and it just turns off, and somehow it just keeps going. It's like it defies understanding. But we don't quote them a whole lot. They're hideously expensive. Yeah. Um, 
they have a couple of series now that come with what's, what's a product called in phase loaded on the back. They're really doing some amazing things, they really are. So they're very highly regarded around the world. I was just going to ask about how, how do you choose the type of panel? For me, I'm, uh, what I'm looking for is the, the warranty and the efficiency. So if, if our company had 12 panels, I find that a bit confusing. Yes, oh. I'm sorry, I mean, those three that you've listed there, yep. you supplied all of them. Yes, we do. Yep. So how, how does, does a domestic home, do you choose one To me, one? I always start with the Ryzen panels because I think it's the best value. Okay. High warranty, high output. It's the highest output we've got yeah, to go okay. from. But then the homeowner might say, can you give me a quote with a few cells and somehow it's easy enough to do that. Right? So it's just, that's my starting point. Yeah. We used to have a, a position at work where they used to like to say good, better, best. It's not, it's like good, really good, and even gooder. Okay. Right? There's, there's nothing, there's no, people always say, oh, I don't want these rubbish panels. I don't think anyone's got rubbish panels anymore. The efficiencies and the warranties are just upping every year. So, oh, good, better, best. They love to talk about this at work. It's like, this doesn't work, they're all good. Um, and in some cases and in some roofs, you could, put, you could put water balloons on the roof and they get such a good result, right? So, some properties are just so well set up to pick up ultraviolet light every day. Anything will work. But we do go to a lot of trouble for what we pick. There's, there's an amazing array of products out there. And every company, so even Ryzen and Q-Cells, will have like 25 different versions. And you just, where would you start? Yeah. You know? So we just pick one that's going to work for us. Okay, that's clear. Thank you. Yeah. Is it also just worth um, mentioning as well, um, is there, apart from the Sun Power, which is yep. obviously expensive, <laughs> between the Ryzen and the Q-Cells, um, is there one that works better if there is some shading uh, where optim optimizers might be required? So potentially, right? So again, it's just going to depend on what's happening at the property during the sunlight hours, right? So in some cases, it, it might be the case that whilst the sun power works really well in strange light scenarios, both of these products will work, will maintain the efficiency if you use a Tigo power optimizer uh, on the back of that. Um, and also now that we're investigating the Fronius inverters are now using this cloud-based product that's going to allow them to work even better in poor light scenarios as well. So that's something that we're constantly thinking about. Mm -hmm. it, it's one of those things that really gives me, makes me nervous at work when you homeowner tells you they're dressed, you bring up the roof and you go, oh no, here we go. And you can see half the roofs on the shade. Around here is not so bad, but where I live out near the Yarra Ranges, there are some rivers where the photo will just be dark. Mm. And there isn't a whole lot you can do there, and you've got to be responsible and say, we wouldn't do this. Mm. It, it just won't work. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big conversation at the moment about improve, or maintaining efficiency more than anything else. Um, panels, when they get compromised in a, um, in a stream system, you know, that's going to affect the whole thing in one go. So we we do a lot of panel optimizers um, just, just to make sure that we know that we're doing the right thing. So in this property, it could be shading here in the late afternoon, but it will be shading from the chimney in early afternoon, mm. right? So that's what the near map program allows us to do, to look at different times. Right um, so here we're just talking about solar inverters. Again, we do the same thing. We use three different inverters, and again, use them for sites site specific so we always start with Goodweed. Goodweed's got a 10 year warranty, it's got a fantastic monitoring platform uh, and again it's able to work with single phase and three phase properties depending on the size of the system and what's required at home. Fronius is probably the best known inverter on the market, they're an Austrian company, they've been around for some ridiculous amount of time like 50 or 60 years, very heavily involved in in the solar market all around the world. There are prefer <laughs> installers in Australia love them because they've got a clamshell design and it's very easy to open and, and access. They also have a 10 year warranty, a fantastic monitoring platform as well. The third one we've got is Solar Edge. And solar Edge is a, a product that we use or a, an inverter that we use for properties that have got difficult roof spaces or have got again, shade problems. So in a solar edge system, every panel in that system will have a power optimizer on the back and it allows the whole system to be broken up where each panel is independently monitoring itself and the system as a whole. At the start of last year, we did the installation at the MCG. It had to be done as a solar edge system because the, 
the MCT has got those enormous light towers and they throw around these huge shadow corridors all day. So again, they're all, that's the same as we were saying before. They're, they're all what they call CEC approved or tier one products. They're used in residential and commercial applications, all three of them all around the world. Warranties from 10 to 12 years. It's solar each has got a 12 year uh, inverter warranty. Okay. So here we're just talking about the battery storage products we have at work. We've got, we've got two products at work. One is the, uh, the company's called Alpha ESS. It's a 10.1 kilowatt capacity product. It allows you to, in your, in your journey, you can add a further five batteries to the system. You can increase the system capacity up to 60.6 kilowatts of storage if you want to. It, it does a, it, battery storage does another, a couple of things. One is obviously it stores energy from your solar system during the day. When the sun goes down, it releases that energy back to the house. But it can also provide um, protection with blackout if you have a network outage during the day, which is in some locations can be very important. Um, Alpha is also the company we use for three-phase battery solutions, so a single-phase property and a three-phase property have both got different needs for battery storage. The inverter, the battery inverter, has got a five-year warranty and the, the battery, five-year warranty, so I'm not looking at it, and ten-year battery warranty. So it's five years on the inverter and ten years on the battery, I think, or it's the other way around, I've forgotten. But it's a product we've been working with now just nearly a year and a half, and it's been really, really successful. It, it kind of looks like a, an old-fashioned column gas heater. It's got a really, really good monitoring platform. We've only had nothing but success with it. It's been really good. What part of the house is that going? Well, that's, that's a really good question because the um, battery standards and regulations were tipped upside down about 12 months ago. So um, it's, there's lots of, lots of consideration taken in place if you go for a battery installation. You can't install a battery on a habitable wall. Um, if you do them in garages in some circumstances, they've got to have bollards in front of them. Um, there's a height restriction, so it's got to be like 900 mil clear at the top and 650 on the side. I haven't run into any problems where it's stopped the battery installation being done, but the homeowner might say, oh, we like that, and they'll say, no, can't do it. So it's um, the two main, the two key things about a battery installation are switchboard requirements and location. So that, that's something that we've been adapting to for about a year and a half now. It was very different. People used to just install them anywhere in a garage, and there's your, looks on the wall, looks fantastic, right? But, but now if you see a battery installed, it has to meet those regulations. So the last thing we want is a non-compliant battery install, otherwise it's got to come out. So, so this has become a very big topic uh, recently is solar panel and battery recycling. I haven't, haven't been selling batteries long enough that I've needed to have them recycled, but this company that we partnered up with, uh, E360, uh, has certainly already helped a couple of my homeowners where we've had solar panels removed, homeowner didn't know what to do with them. People say put them on eBay, it's like no, they, they, you've got to do something. It's, we're getting more and more um, solar panels that are coming off roofs and, being, and there's a necessity for this recycling. So the last thing we want to do is see these just go into landfills, it would just be a com complete wrong. Um, so this is something that's becoming more and more of a, a discussion at work and, and I'm really glad that we partnered up with these guys because when I started we didn't have an option to help the people. So uh, where are E360 located? I don't know, I haven't met them, right? It's, it's just a partnership. They yeah. told us that if in the event that we've got any, it's listed in, in HubSpot and if, mm. if I've got anybody who has an inquiry or we're removing a system, mm. um, we can forward their details up to them and mm -hmm. they can look into it. But previously what they used to do was if you were recycling one of these old government systems, mm. they just take them off the roof and just put them in the backyard mm. and then the homeowner doesn't know where and what to do with them. Um, so we've, the solar panel and battery recycling is going to become a, a really big subject every, you know, from now on for every year. Battery, battery storage is, um, battery recycling and battery storage is a much bigger thing in America mm. and I've seen some photos of these enormous lots where there's batteries just sitting there and they, they're only just starting to get their head around how they can recycle those into reusing the material. So it's, it is becoming a very important part of the project. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
Righto, so as, as part of the Solar Savings Program, um, tonight you'll get asked if you want to fill in the registration form here or you can do it online, speak to Solar Savers. We, even in the conversation that you would have with me, for example, I am going to ask you for a copy of an electricity bill and a photo of your meter and a photo of your meter switches. All of that just to be able to give you the right information back um, and, and put the right products in your solar quota. If, if you decide to go ahead with a quote with our company, we do send out an installer to do an assessment of the property. It's called a pre-install inspection. And that's to look at things like access to the property, access to the roof, health of the roof, making sure that the system will actually fit. Um, the three types of roof materials that we work with is colour bond steel, or corrugated iron, clip lock steel, and tile roofs. All of them have slightly different requirements. It's easy for me to drop panels on your roof with the program I use. It doesn't mean necessarily I get it right. So having an installer go out there and give me a report on how it's going to work is, is really invaluable and invaluable for you as well. And obviously, you, the quote is no obligation. There's no cost involved in that. In our team, there's, there's four sales people in our team and we, you'll get the same service as you get from all four of us who give you the same service. There's no obligation and there's no cost. But we, we do ask for bill, meter switchboard. There's information on your bill that allows us to do a pre-approval with the network that you're in. There's two networks in this council. There's City Power down this end and Gemini up this end. And they've all got different requirements for incoming solar. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. We'll have some other questions afterwards and um, if anyone has question that they'd like to ask Anthony. Yeah. Um, sorry. Oh, sorry. Do you have uh, do you use an internal install too or do you use subcontractors? We use both. So we've got in house team um, and we've got accredited third parties that we've been working with for a long time. We don't have a random <coughs> source. Right. So if we went if, if there were too many inquiries in one month, they don't just there's yellow pages and yeah. one eight hundred solar installers, right? Yeah. It's just I'm so glad that they don't. Yep. Um, so for example, one of the guys, one of the companies we use that works with us is um, Tyler Regenerate. He's been around forever and homeowners ring up and ask for him. It's mm -hmm. kind of crazy. So, but in-house is really helpful for us as well because there's lots of properties or types of properties um, where they might have more experience in here than installs we just work. So it's a bit of a mix. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, what's batteries. So yeah. is it feasible yeah. to add batteries later? You can always re on our systems you can always retrofit a battery. It used to be a few years ago some batteries just couldn't retrofit, but the manufacturers are trying to make it that you can flip it on to any system themselves. So. And just on cost, I mean you may not be able to answer this question, but what would be the average cost for an average size home? For, for what? For, an average for a battery or for, oh, for, both. for both? It does it does vary. So it's if, if it's a single story property or a two story property, steel roof versus a tile roof. So there's lots of little costs in the back end of the solar quote that'll dictate what it is. I know on social media they'd like you to think that there's this one price and it's real easy. It's it's really not. It's almost irresponsible to just say that there is because every home is different. Every one property here in this room will be different. Um, I'm involved in an installation at four units in South Yarra at the moment, and we nailed it down to one price for each one because, because it's exactly the same property. But as soon as you go next door, the house is different next door to the house down the street. So um, like, you don't feel comfortable committing to it yeah. for a price structure. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry. Oh, there you go. Um, you mentioned when you were talking about inverters, the monitoring. Yeah. Is that consumption monitoring? No. So in a in a solar installation, it's always generation, yeah. but each one of those brands mm. does have a consumption meter that you can add on. Yeah, it's an additional cost. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it, for people who want to get very analytical about what's going on yeah. from the pole versus what's going on on the roof mm. and what you're doing, mm. consumption monitoring is a great help. Yeah. Having a power cut yeah. on your yeah. meter is a great help, right? So if you understand what your demand is from grid supply, versus what you're producing off the roof and what you're consuming off the roof. Yeah. Most people are happy just to produce off the roof, they do yeah. great, right? Yeah. 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 Y
Um, I'm not sure how excited you get about consumption monitoring over time. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Before I have a while, right? Sorry. <laughs> but but if, you're, if you think about the two reference points for solar, which is the two truths that you will get, middle of the year you'll produce less off the roof, yeah. end of the year you'll over produce. Yeah. But your, your supply from the coal might be constant. Mm -hmm. So for some people, solar in the middle of the year can seem like a disappointment, mm -hmm. like it's not working. Yeah. It's, it's not bad, it's just that we're further from the sun and we've got shorter days. Yeah. So it's quite a contrast. So, a short question about the shading. Yeah. So, just the chimney, is that already a problem? It's not, it's, it's not a problem because the, yeah. if, depending on what side of the roof the chimney's on, depending on <laughs> the same the, side as the panels here. Right, and depending on how high the chimney is. Right? Well, just standard sticks of carbon below the roof. Probably. So, what, what it's going to do during the day, it's the shadow profile in the morning is going to start over here and it's going to change as it goes through the day. So for us, we're thinking about the shadow profile or the loss of efficiency on the system. We're thinking about late morning through to late afternoon. Sometimes people will say, oh, look, you know, there's a shadow problem here at nine o'clock in the morning. I'm not so concerned about solar generation at nine o'clock. The sun is not producing a lot of ultraviolet at that time. But for the rest of the day, you'd like to think that you've catered to that. All the all the battery manufacturers have got a battery inverter built in. Yeah. Right? So if if you were trying to have less of a footprint at home, solar and battery together the first time yes, was yeah, this yeah, yeah. But the yeah. second time you would see your solar inverter and then you'd have your battery system next to yeah. them. And they're getting more compact, they are, but it just saves time. That's right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned one was like about roof strength. Yeah. What does that mean? Is that related to whether you've got tiles or well, um, you're going to online or? No, so much just sometimes when we talk about the health of the roof, like an installer goes out there, we've got a property at the moment um, not too far away from here. It's a collection of older style townhouses that were built in the 40s. And we installed at one property that was no issue. We got to the second property and the roof internally had moved. And so from the ground, it just looked like a roof. But when the installer got up there, the roof had a wave in it on a tile roof. We, we can't install until he fixes that. So that requires engineering structurally to improve the roof integrity. Because 16 panels times 18, 19 kilos is going to make that more unstable again. So if, if you were not being diligent or you know being up front with homeowners, you just go, oh, no problem, we'll just install that, right? So the second property I've seen where the integrity of the roof changed and it gets a wave in it. Now on a steel roof, that's probably, it's less of a problem because a steel roof does not weigh as much as a tile roof. Um, and the addition of solar panels or an array of panels will most likely not affect the integrity internally. But from this tile roof, you should have seen these photos of the truss that they really had moved and there's waves in the roof. So we do go to a lot of trouble to try and assess that. Now, if we, if we didn't do a pre-install inspection, so if I, if you accepted a quote from me, and then next week we just send out the guys, it'll create a great disconnect between us and you, because they most likely won't be able to do the nose drive off. So it's, it's important to do as much due diligence as you can. So with the, um, the regular nitrogen system, so the checkups that you have to do on the system, um, and that so. Uh, so electrically wise in the solar system, generally not. Sometimes if you have a network outage in the street, it might trigger the safety switch mm -hmm. and you'll have to reboot the inverter. Solar panels are a bit like a glass door, so we can see through it, but if you drag our finger over it, we will get some brine on it. Mm -hmm. We sort of suggest every couple of years there are third party companies that get up there and clean them. Mm -hmm. It will, it will just maintain the best efficiency you can have the system. But if you don't do it, in 25 years time, the system will still be working. It's just that it, it somehow, constantly maintained, you will have better efficiency. That's all. And what about electrically, yes, so like the main uh, 
call it um, inversion. Yeah. Is that what the check says or what you do there? So, no, not really. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything like that. It's, it was a number of years ago in old solar systems, solar inverters tend to fall over all the time. Um, these days they're built better for Australian conditions. We, the products we use, we very rarely get that. Very rarely let us down. But you know, again, if the power goes out in the street, that's the first thing. So if the homeowner doesn't think, oh, yeah, the solar inverter, right? They'll come back to you weeks later and say, the system's not working, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. And it just needs a reboot. So that's a learning piece where you try and empower the homeowner and say, remember there's a shutdown and boot up procedure and the thing about that the power goes out. But generally, they don't push you down for pretty good. And with that being inverse, would there be some kind of reboot? What would you want to I've gone your monitoring platform and you also, if you were looking at it, you were using that, you would also see you've got zero brush. Yeah. And it's not the panels all let down. I mean, the only thing that can really, two things that will destroy a solar system is hurricane winds, if they have anything like that, might rip off the roof. Or if you go to a hail event and go to the tenant wall, it just takes out everything. So, you know, we do encourage people to put it on their home contents insurance system. But the most hail <coughs> you get will just bounce off like it does on the roof. Oh, um, reading up on eco energy, yeah. um, unfortunately, um, we understand that people are more inclined to negative reviews. Oh, yeah, they do. Positive reviews, and there were a few negative reviews for eco regarding messy installs and yeah. poor communication from the company. Absolutely. What yeah. do you have to say what about I'm, those kind of things? I'm very lucky in that I have a great relationship with my owners, and I'm old-fashioned with customer service. You can't always say the same for when you go to installers and engineers or if you go to um, anything post-installation. There's a number of procedures in a solar installation. Yeah. You can end up feeling like you've been completely disconnected. Mm. My favourite one is when you get installed, there's a reconnection process between you, your energy retail and your network. Yeah. It, and then you need an independent inspector to create a CDS. Yeah. So all of that can take time. And just because I'll return your phone call in five minutes or I'll reply to correct doesn't mean I pick a word. Yeah. All solar retailers have got a fantastic collection of negative reviews yeah. and they're hideous. Yeah. And so. I suppose I was thinking about that as well, being managing a program and going through that whole process yeah. and managing it anyway. The complaints will be people not understanding the process, so that's why we're there to sort of help educate and sort of tell them there's so many different yeah. Businesses and uh, organisations in the whole journey. So mm -hmm. Victoria, we might get you started with that, and yeah. going through down the big connection inspectors. Um, um, Solar Vic at the moment has got resources out doing yeah. flood relief, so yeah. Yeah. we can't install your system unless you've completed the Solar Vic, right? Yeah. And I'm saying, can you call them, please? Yeah. And they can't keep up. Yeah. That. So there's a number of, for work, I created a roadmap for homeowners, which mm -hmm. wrote it myself. I, I was involved in doing meter reconfiguration for billing companies, for solar customers as well. So I know post installation what happens. Mm. So, so that's me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's me, right? So I suppose it's just that we do try and manage that. Yes, we do have um, some concerns from householders, mm -hmm. um, and we try and best to manage that. And we do work with Eco Energy with our communication. So Solar Pay is also sent out information to us. It's a small way yeah. um, with Eco. Um, that and I do the same. We did yeah, it for the yeah. as well, those compliance yeah. orders. So at the moment I've, I've just booked six compliance orders um, through TechSafe. So um, they go out and completely inspect, make sure it's all being safely um, installed according to all the standards. Yeah. And they come back and review. And like we've been doing this for since well, I started the pilot program back in 2018 and we've been doing all through there. And we haven't had any major problems, but the most minor ones on the medium mm -hmm. um, list, but the minor ones are more likely to missing a label or some of the cabling underneath the panel might be loose and that can be done even from time of birth and so they've they been having the main big issues. So yeah. But yeah, when you businesses there can be some issues and it's unfortunate people that you want to put that on Google yeah. reviews. Yeah. But it, it would also be fantastic if solar was just like buying coverage. Yeah. That would be really great. Um, I could do it myself. Yeah. But it, it, in most of the complication is in that getting all you know, getting ready for installation. Then there's complications that can happen in the installation yeah. and also post installation, right? So you might have this experience with me and think, oh, it's great, right? Mm -hmm. And then it can go to quiet. Yeah. Right? And it, a lot of the time it's because either the operational team is just flat out trying to do too much at once, yeah. 
um, or they're trying to get them installed back to you. But yeah, I get told about the revenues all the time. That's also part of um, the benefit of coming through the Solar Savers program. Mm -hmm. um, you've got Solar Savers to refer to yeah. if you are having any challenges and difficulties mm -hmm. through the process. Um, they're always available for answering questions and following up. Um, so that's um, yeah, a great benefit of coming through the program. And I can tell you that because I, if I did anything wrong, I have to deal with this too. Or, or Catherine, right? <laughs> so you know, we're very conscious of that. It's a very important relationship. We were talking earlier about a grant scheme when we first started. I can't remember, is it two years ago now? Is it? Yeah. Um, it's two years. You know, just start off slowly working with you know, homeowners in this council. And it's been a great experience and it's really great. I say Mary Beth now. Yeah. 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 that word, but it's, um, it's been really great to work with this council and homeowners and working with these two is fantastic as well. Yeah. And I'll just say a little bit about the Merribeck um, solar subsidy. So Merribeck does have $3,000 available to help low income households install solar. Um, there's 50 subsidised places uh, each financial year or up until 2023 and we're hoping that that will continue past 2023. Um, eligible, el eligible residents receive the subsidy through the Mary Beck Solar Savers Program. So you'd be coming through and talking to Kate and um, then you'd be talking to Anthony about having solar installed or yeah. one of the other eco energy um, consultants. Um, the benefits, um, as we were talking about, is that you've got help and assistance from Solar Savers through the journey. Um, so installing solar, like Anthony said, is not like buying a television. Um, it's complex, there's lots of different moving parts yeah. and um, coming through the program, uh, we assist you through that. So Solar Savers are there to, to help you along the way. And that also includes applying for the Solar Victoria rebate. Um, uh, so, <coughs> excuse me. So the eligibility uh, for receiving the Merribeck subsidy is that you must be a Merribeck resident. Um, an owner occupier, so own the property that you're living in and wanting to install solar on, um, so the home that you're living in, um, that you're only, only, own, only owning one property, um, that you identify as a low income household, so having either a healthcare card, pensioner concession card, or veterans affairs card, um, an income under $48,000 before tax, um, or that you meet the Centrelink income test for a healthcare card, um, and that you don't have solar installed already on your roof. So um, that the reason for that one is that um, if you've already got solar installed and you've claimed the Solar Victoria rebate, um, you can't um, you can't claim it again. So um, that's the, uh, part of the eligibility. Um, here's just a little snapshot to finish. Um, Mary Beck households. Um, so of the residents in Marybeck, there's over 8,000 who have got solar installed. Uh, 141 of those households have installed through the Marybeck Solar Savers Program uh, with Eco Energy, and 51 of those households have received the, the Marybeck $3,000 support. Um, and there's just a couple of quotes from um, some residents who've come through the program and found the support through the program really helpful in, in navigating uh, installing solar. So um, yeah, we're here to help and um, hope, hopefully make your journey to installing solar um, easier. <laughs> and we've all already had a few questions, but if anyone has any, any further questions, feel free to, to ask them now or you can come and talk to us afterwards. I do think no one's got anything to say. It's not that it's not, uh, it can be done, we can, we can do multi-story and three stories, but it, you might find that there's a requirement for a, a scissor lift or a panel lifter to be able to get the panels up there. It's so a bit expensive, it just costs more to install. Yeah. So if sing, single story property, it's included in the quote. If it was a, if I see that it's a two story property, there's a two story charge that goes in there. 
if, for example, it was a, all you had was a street frontage, you didn't have a backyard or access to the backyard, they're going to have to use a panel lift or a scissor lift, and that, that's shown as an additional cost in the quad. Right? Um, works like Victoria is cracking down more and more about apprentices carrying up panels up ladders and dangerous, and um, in residential properties there are very few accidents. In commercial installations there are sometimes accidents. So we're very hardcore about our health and safety requirements at work. So. Yeah, you also That's why we don't do that. Um, so there are companies that do that. They understand um, what's required. You're right. So you've got to have, if you're doing any work on a roof, you've got to have edge protection around the roof. So if you were doing panel cleaning, like ma maintenance, same thing. You can't just put a ladder up there and get up there with a mop and it's got to be done properly. So um, we're our commercial team that do the big bunning size site systems, they've got a company that they've used for panel cleaning. They offer it as part of their deal. We're in the middle of negotiating with them at the moment to offer it for the residential. So in the, in the event that you want to, we've got a contact for you or we might be able to include it as a, an ongoing cost in the quote. So it's something we're talking about at the moment. Yeah. You can also clean your panels safely from the ground. Sometimes we stick to the hose that you can reach them, so it doesn't really necessarily mean no. um, clean unless you want a very dusty or wheel lead. Because it's generally the rain can clean them, but you can safely. So in a in a property that's got a traditional ridge down the middle, so the panels are flush mounted. So any dust or leaf litter generally either blows off or will wash off in the rain. Properties that have got a flat roof or a very low incline, you make sure we never flush mount those panels because I've seen photos of <coughs> panels that are flush mounted with pools of water on them and it, it just it just creates a real mess. So even on a flat roof, the panel has a slight tilt frame angle um, with the idea that it'll, it'll clean off. Yeah. Um, what's the time frame for receiving the panel It's, um, we'd love to say to everybody it was like 10 days. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it depends on the time of the year. Okay. Um, for example, uh, not far from here in Epping, I've had a house done recently in a two story place. I think it was confirmed today they're coming on Monday. That's about 12 days. Okay. So, um, in the middle of the year when it's quiet, I've seen them done in 48 hours. Right. I think um, through the program, if you want to do it, um, grant households, they um, inquired and they managed to help provide information to the Solar Survey Base in a good time and they got their system installed within two months. So it was installed and turned on? Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. in two months. Okay. So that's, that's probably the, the fastest that we've seen recently because it just depends um, on the personal sort of the information. You might be able to in quotes for some time. Um, the Solar Survey Base does, some people may take a bit of time. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point, right? There's a number of factors that can slow down an installation journey. Yeah, exactly. You can have issues with the network, mm -hmm. right? So if they require uh, a manual assessment or a generator to do it because your system's too big to be being installed, that can slow you down. Solar Victoria can sometimes have resource issues. Um, and post installation, you can have the inspectors being a bit slow because the same guy who has solar will be doing brand new toasters and air conditioning units. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes uh, the quickest I've ever seen while ago was three and a half weeks, the whole thing. Yeah. They didn't have solar deep, yeah. they didn't have any issues with the network, yeah. everything just went bang, bang, bang really quickly. Yeah. So mine average six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Average. Thank you. Um, I just, oh, sorry. So what is the background with the solar lithium base? Uh, the background? Yeah, is the nature of the additional lead base or, or the oh. lower base that they are? Um, so the Solar Victoria rebate, um, so that's an application that you'd have to do once your quote's been accepted and um, Eco Energy facilitate that process. So they'll notify you when your application is ready to be made for Solar Victoria um, and Sol uh, Solar Savers can assist you with um, the application process if you need any help with that. So there's no percentage of rebate ten percent Are they used to it? Uh, they used to. They used to, yeah. be, they used to be numbers. They used to get released twice a month. Um, and you would see in my company on the day of release, everyone's there at 10 to 9 in the morning waiting for the customers. 
trying different routes. Then they stopped that and they just opened it up to everyone seven days a week. So I can register you at 10.30 at night, no problem, it goes through. Um, battery rebates have got a limited number available, but I've not seen them run out yet, so it's been pretty good. So we kind of take it for granted now. If you accept a quote and you're eligible, I've got to register you. In that registration, we'll trigger an email from Solar Victoria and we'll get an application link in an email from them. So it's a fairly straightforward process. It is, it is fairly straightforward now. Well, you used to have to take like selfies and all sorts of crazy things. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it is, they do update their process occasionally in the journey, and, and as I reckon it's the easiest it is at the moment. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you all for coming. Um, if you would like to register tonight for the program, we can assist you with that tonight. Um, otherwise, you're very welcome to contact Solar, Vict um, Solar Savers or myself. Um, I saw the same details of that. Um, I think that's it, but I also did just want to um, ask you if you haven't already, um, if you're able to fill in the evaluation form, please, from tonight's